Our dearest viewers from across the globe, our most sincere and heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And welcome to Imam Hussein TV3 from our London studio where we actually have sun in London, which makes a lovely change. And it's <coughs> quite a coincidence as we celebrate three of the sons of Islamic history. None other than Imam al Sajjad, Sayyid al Sajdeen, Sayyid al Shahada, Imam al Hussein, and his noble and most loyal brother Abu Fadl Abbas. And Alhamdulillah, I'm overjoyed to be joined by three esteemed guests Sayyid Haider, Abu Shahbaz, and Brother Adam. We welcome you all, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Our dearest viewers, smiles are on the faces of the Shia on this month. We're eagerly anticipating the holy month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala shah Ramadan but in order to prepare for this our spiritual awakening is shaken by the celebration of the birth of these lions of Karbala of these heroes of Islam and inshallah today our goal is very simple between us we want to melt the hearts of the believers we want to yeah. melt the hearts of our brothers and sisters inshallah but inshallah most importantly to serve and to bring a smile to the face of our dear away to Saviour. May Allah hasten his reappearance as we sing the praises and speak of the praises of these incredible men. And I start with any one of you. Pick one of them and that will be the start of the show, inshallah. Um, Rather than our teacher. All three, uh, two Imams, and we can even refer to Hazrat Abbas al Islam as Imam Abbas. Mm. If those who have been to Karbala, they'll know the Iraqis refer to him as Imam Abbas. Not in the sense of Imam from the 12 Imams, but uh, one of the saddest things that I feel and is a in big injustice to Hazrat Abbas al Islam is we've always been told about his valor, his strength, mm. how courageous he was, and there's no doubt in that. He was the son of Ali ibn Abu Talib al Islam, and that was one of his uh, great abilities. But he was also highly knowledged. His talimat was from uh, Imam Ali al Islam himself, Imam Hassan al Islam, Imam Hussein al Islam. I don't think you'll find anybody in this world mm. who's had three Imams as his teacher. Mm -hmm. So there is no doubt about it that the knowledge of Hazrat Abbas al Islam was beyond a level we can even contemplate. Yeah. But unfortunately, some of our lecturers they don't give justice to this. And I think for our youth, especially, it's something you have to look into. Um, I remember reading a kutbah quite recently uh, about when Hazrat Abbas al Islam, and we know he was very powerful, yeah. not only in, in, in a war, but even in speech. And um, uh, when uh, they were in Mecca, Hazrat Abbas al Islam got on top of the Kaaba. Um, and I clarified with some sheikhs and well learned scholars if this kutbah was actually real. One of the things he says in, in the kutbah, he goes, This house only has value because my father, no, because his father, look how Hazrat Abbas speaks, mm. look at the respect level. He doesn't say my father, he says his father, uh, referring to Imam Hussein al Islam, his father was born in it. That was oh, the man. power of his speech. Um, so it's something that we should always understand that, you know, Hazrat Abbas al Islam wasn't just a bloodthirsty, you know, uh, barbaric sword mm. throw, you know, sword flying killer of, of enemies. He was, all, he was a great warrior. Scholar. Um, he was a scholar. He, he, I'm sure had there been a time where he would have had to answer the que a question, mm. he would have done it just as well as mm. any imam would have. And that was something that we don't give him credit for. Sense. And of course, so. when we remember our father, we must remember Umm al Benin, salam Allah alayha, our, our oh. queen and our inspiration, inspiration no. to men and women, regardless of <coughs> valor and of <coughs> conviction for Ali Muhammad. Of course. Of course. And, and you know her loyalty towards the Ahlul Bayt mm. because when she got the news of Karbala she didn't ask about her own sons she asked about Imam Hussein and even though going through each of her sons one by one until getting to Abul Fadl Abbas which is one of her favorite sons mm. she still didn't you know she didn't break as much as she did yeah, when, she, yeah. when she found out about Imam Hussein yeah. and you know um, who, who we, we cannot blame 
uh, such an amazing, amazing uh, being, such as Abdul Fadl Abbas, when he comes from a mother so strong, yeah. and so so much so filled with the love of Amir al Mu'minin, Imam al Hussein, and stuff like that. She came in and said, "Don't call me by my name." I well, don't, I don't remind them. You know, you're, you're absolutely right, Haider. There said because we know the alphabet because we were taught by our parents. Um, Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam, it was his mother that installed and instilled that love, that loyalty, yes, uh, in him because a mother plays a very important role in of Islam. Um, within our fiqh, women are a very important part of Islam. We have Bibi Fatima Sayyidah, Salamu alayha, we have Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. Even, uh, there's no justification to Umay Kulthum sometimes. We completely forget mm, her, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. She did as many struggles as anybody in Islam. And our women in Islam have <laughs> given as much as the men. Mm, and yeah. we, we, we recognize this, alhamdulillah, on a great deal. And this is because a mother plays a very, very big role as well. And uh, I wouldn't love the alphabet the way I do if it wasn't for my mother, mo mother teaching me that. And my children wouldn't have that because I couldn't do that to my children. Mm. I can only play a certain role. So uh, th th a great deal of credit goes to Umm al-Benin for how Hazrat Abbas and how his brothers were. Course. They, they were all course equal in love with the yeah, yeah. yeah. And adding to that um, about Hazrat Abbas, uh, there was once an Urdu poet, and uh, he said that everybody in this dunya asks through Imam Ali. Alayhi salam. You ask for rizq, you ask through him. You ask for children, you ask through him. Everything, even when he was alive, people used to come through him. Yet if there was one thing that Imam Ali Islam asked for, that was Abu Fadl al-Abbas. Ahsan. Ahsan. Beautiful. Ahsan. Mm. Salawat, inshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And of course, we remember another <laughs> hero of Karbala, though maybe not with the sword, but thereafter with his tongue and his eloquence, none other than Imam al-Sajjad, salam alayhi alayhi. And it's, it's a weird one. With, with Imam Hussein, usually when, when we think of that name, immediately we think Karbala, Karbala, Karbala. When we think Abu Fadl, we usually think straight away Karbala, Karbala. With Imam al Sajjad, we do tend to divide his life into two parts, kind of Karbala and post Karbala. Mm. And there is naturally the one text that we go to whenever we think about him is the Treaties of Rights, Rasalat al Hukuk, which we'll talk a little about later. But just that title, if we may, just for a moment, Sayyid al Sajideen. Sayyid al-Sajideen, the jewel or the pearl of the worshippers. I mean, that's, it that's a level, you know? It is, it still definitely is. Well, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing we can do. And uh, none of us could ever relate or even understand what his eminence went through. Of course. Um, and he found solace and peace in prostrating to Allah, as did all the imams. Mm. And, and, and we've read many a hadith where, and I'm sure people have heard, where they had to shave the calluses of his head due to the amount of sujood they mm. used to do. Because it was nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that got him through those difficult times. And we should remember this. These, these are uh, examples for us. These are examples. Our imams went through these trials and tribulations to leave examples for us. Mm. When you are going through a hard time, when you do feel that the world is you know, dissipating around you, things are falling through. I'm a man with a lot of experience. Find solace in God. Mm. Do your sujood. Go get, get close to Allah. Go into sujood. Speak to your Lord. Yes? Um, because our Imam taught us that. Mm. And we mustn't forget their teachings. It's, of course, we must never forget Karbala. But there's no point only remembering Karbala. If we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we're actually, uh, our Imams will be very upset with us. Of course. Of course. Imam Sajjad played a massive role actually in Karbala and after Karbala. You know, um, Imam Sajjad, during Karbala, you know, there was a reason why he, was, he wasn't able to, to, to fight. And there was a reason why, um, you know, he was ill during, those, during that event. Mm. And this is not just like a coincidence of his ill. No, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has bestowed this on him. Why? Because he has a much more important um, uh, duty that has straight after Karbala. And that's maintaining. Because, okay, they saved the name of Islam. But at the end of the day, everyone that was in Karbala has passed away. Mm. All the men, any, any, anything. So they needed, Imam Sajjad had one of the most important jobs out of our Imams. Because, and that's maintaining the message of Rasulullah. And not letting it slip. And subhanAllah, Imam Sajjad done it and, 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 and we lived through it. If I can add something there, there's, um, when after Karbala, when Imam Sajjad was in Medina, and Yazid had ransacked the balloon, he'd, he'd 
completely tried to destroy the carbon and everything. Yeah. Uh, but at a later stage, Imam Sajjad al Islam, he was taking rice on his back and he was dropping outside people's houses who were mm. hungry. Um, and some, some viewers may have heard this uh, uh, um, uh, tradition and narration. And one of his Sahaba turned around and said, Oh, Imam, this is the Umayyads. He said, They are hungry. Whether they accept me as their Imam or they don't accept me as their Imam, I am their Imam. This is my responsibility. I mean, imagine giving food to the people or the people who are responsible for it. But this is what the difference is between this is why they are infallible. This is why we don't understand sometimes. We say infallible, we think, What's infallible? You know, okay, they didn't commit sin. Understand what infallible is. It's not just a simple concept. Like, uh, there's, there's a hadith I just want to narrate on the back of that actually. So Imam al-Baqir of course Imam al-Sajjad's son, he says, Verily he, referring to Imam al-Sajjad, Verily he used to provide for 100 households from among the poor of Medina. Wow. He liked for the orphans, the needy, the disabled, the poor and the destitute to be present at his food spreads. He served them with his own hands. And if anyone among them had a family, he used to take the food to their household. He never ate any food, but that he first gave charity from it. And we're saying this is coming from Imam al-Baqir So we're not saying, you know, is this going to be legitimate or, you know, no, how true is it? And he's saying just that last <coughs> bit, he never ate <coughs> any food. So no bite of any food, but that he first gave charity from it. And that is Ali Muhammad, if you could ever summarize yeah, it, I think. Beautiful. It's beautiful. incredible. Viewers, alhamdulillah, with our guests, we've got a mixture of incredible voices, but also lyricists, and that's definitely not myself, that's the three around me. And during this program, inshallah, they'll be delivering lines of poetry to heighten your emotion in praise and in memory and in joyous celebration of these infallible personalities. And there is that famous narration kind of looking at the opposite of it where it says anyone who writes a bait of poetry, a couplet of poetry mm. and makes the individuals cry, then paradise is, is their haven and it goes through a uh, descending amount of numbers until mm. even if it's just one and if they're sad, then you'll still enter paradise. So inshallah, I leave the floor open to you guys as and when you feel right to read um, out some of your poetry, inshallah. I, I will start off with a very, I'll start off, I'll start off the poetry. Please, if you, please. If you allow me with something very short but very to the point and um, this is a, a, a poem of honor mm. uh, to Imam Hussein. It's four lines and it's um, uh, I will try and explain it after I read the poetry what I'm trying to say in the in the last sure. um, Oh Hussein you fought the tyrants and their oppression. Mm. Oh Hussein you fought the tyrants and their oppression. Oh Hussein, you taught us defense against aggression. Mm. Oh Hussein, you taught us defense against aggression. Against an Umayyad onslaught of arrogance and transgression. Mm. Of arrogance and transgression, you gave your head, Hussein, and saved Islam's every generation. Allah. Um, when, when I say Islam's every generation, Islam didn't start with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Islam started with Adam. Ahsan. And then every descending Prophet, right until our holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were all part of the revelation of Islam. Had Imam Hussein al Islam not given his head in that sacrifice, then every generation of Islam would have been destroyed. No. From Adam <coughs> to Noah to Moses, as, as the mm. English words are for these um, uh, prophets, uh, Jesus or Isa. So understand what Imam Hussein al Islam actually did. A hero. A, a hero. a hero, a savior. Well, I'll do anything for us, inshallah. Um, <clears throat> as uh, you guys may know, um, I, my, my path into reciting was inspired very much so by my teacher, uh, Ustad Sipta Jafar, mm. uh, who was killed uh, by, the, by the enemies of, of the Ahlul Bayt salam, in Karachi a couple of years ago. Um, so in his memory and to bless the sawab of his words, I want to recite some of his words to you guys uh, and inshallah I understand that a lot of people who are uh, watching um, are people who understand English so I'll try and give you a brief sort of outline of what the poet is trying to say so that everybody can get an idea of how powerful his message is unfortunately I can't do his Urdu words justice in English Never. but I will definitely give it a try inshallah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad 
So in these words, his something we call a radif, which is the last line of a of a poem, and that can be the 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 subject of of what he's trying to say. So he says, "Tere naam se zinda hai," right? That it is alive through your name, mm. right? That's his that's his basis of his poetry. So I'll recite the Urdu poetry, just a couple of verses, and as I go along, I'll explain them in English to all of us so that we can Shana. all benefit from this great, Shana. great man words. Uh, let's remember his soul with a loud salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Shabir ye sab dunia tere naam se zinda hai. Shabir ye sab dunia tere naam se zinda hai. Ye din Muhammad ka tere naam se zinda hai. It says Shabir is a is a term in Punjabi that's used for Imam Hussain alayhi mm. salatu wasalam. And he says Shabir ye sab dunia. Shabir, this whole world is alive. Through your name, I wouldn't say world. I say universe. Shabir ya sab dunya, tere naam se zinda hai. Ye din Muhammad ka tere naam se zinda hai. This religion of Muhammad is alive through your name. Sense. And then he says, Allah ka bhi kalma tere naam se zinda hai. Allah's kalma is alive through your name. Then he says, Pehli hai zamane mein tohid ki tanvire. Gunji hai tere dam se Konain mein takbire Hak isse paainda Tere naam se zinda hai He says That in this world The light of Tawheed Spread through your name Gunji hai tere dam se Konain mein takbire And the echoes of takbir Right, were, were heard around the world through your name. Allahu Akbar. And Haq is in connection with you. Tere naam se zinda hai. Alive through your name. Um, I'll just go through a last verse Please. so that um, my other respected reciters uh, will get a chance to recite as well. And this is when he's referring to himself as to how much Imam Hussain alayhi salam had actually blessed him. He says, Shabir ka marsiya khabi Shabir ka shair bhi Shabir ka marsiya khabi Shabir ka shair bhi Pehchan yehi hai zamane Mein ab sibt jafar ki Sad shukr tera banda Tere naam se zinda hai He says as someone who recites the Marsiya or lamentation of Imam Hussain al Islam mm. is called a Marsiya Khan. Noha Khan, Kasida Khan, Marsiya Khan. He says, Shabir ka Marsiya Khan bi, Shabir ka Shair bi. He says, I am the reciter of Shabir's Marsiya and I'm also the recite I'm also a poet of Imam Hussain al Islam. And he says, Pehchan yahi hai zamane me ab sibte jafar ki. That sibte jafar in the whole world is realized through this, through his poetry and through reciting his Marsiya. And then he says, Hundreds and thousands of shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tere naam se zinda hai I am alive through your name Ahsan Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Ahsan And dear viewers, for those of you who are Who have not familiar with Shaheed Sibti Jaat from Allah Bless his soul eternally Please do YouTube him There's many different legends out there in this world Who have taken the time to actually translate his work And subtitle it on YouTube um, and there's a very famous piece that he writes about uh, the arrival of uh, Imam Al-Qa'im, Allah Ta'ala, Faraj Al-Sharif. I really, really recommend you guys to, to try and listen to it, inshallah. And may, may Allah bless. So thank you, Brother Adar. Ahsan. 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 You know what? I'm in love with um, our beliefs. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes I actually sit back and actually, you know, think to myself that we have so much detail mm. in our belief that no other religion has. Okay, so this is a nice little poem from Nuri Sardar And um, I'm not going to say too much of it, it will catch on as I'm going inshallah It's called I'm in love Her scent is heaven's very scent Her touch, it leaves me bewildered 
Her presence settles my heartbeat. Her taste is sweeter than water. The thought of her absence destroys me. And her name is Karbala. I'm bewildered. Her scent, it throws me off balance. As it weaves around her figure. She teases and plays with my heart. Grows in me her loving nature. Comfort within me Every night I slept Upon her sands mm. In Karbala I'm lost when I'm lost in her Through my hand slips Grains of her sands Just, just as my heart It sleeps through hers each day I spend on her desert My heart dipped in her dust lowers So she becomes imprinted on me Till my blood is Karbala Inshallah. I'm love dazed I'm love dazed, lost two domes fixed on my pupil, so that I see them wherever. Time itself becomes meaningless, her infinite forever, and I follow her. So entrance that all roads. Leads to Karbala. Allah. Just on that point, um, as you spoke about Karbala, which is where we know both her Imam, uh, Imam Hussein and um, uh, Hazrat Abbas are both buried. Uh, when I went to Karbala a few years ago, um, I was sitting on a rooftop <laughs> of a hotel, and uh, Murtaza Karbala. Oh, I remember the story. Yeah, he told me. He, he, he came upstairs, very respectful boy and a very beautiful boy. And he said to me, he said, um, he said, Uncle, do you not think Karbala is heaven? <laughs> and uh, I actually said to him, no, it's not heaven. And he was in a bit of shock. And I said, he's greater than heaven. And then this poem came to me. And Adil, I think you've heard this and Adil really loves it. And it, and it goes like this. How do you call Karbala heaven? Heaven itself succumbulates Bain al Haramain. Allah. Heaven Allah. itself Allah. succumbulates Bain al Haramain. How do you call Karbala heaven when heaven itself waits for its door to be opened by Abbas and Hussein? Mm. To be opened by Abbas and Hussein. How do you call Karbala heaven when heaven itself is created from Karbala's dust and its every grain? Karbala is not heaven. Its greatness better. Heaven waits for Karbala. It's quescent. Quescent means quiet. Mm. Heaven waits for Karbala, it's crescent. Without Karbala, heaven is stateless. Heaven is stationed, but Karbala is omnipresent. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Karbala the Qibla before any creation. <laughs> because had Allah not created Karbala, then there was no point of creating creation. Karbala the Qibla before any creation. Karbala the soul of heaven's foundation. Karbala itself gives heaven a donation. For Karbala, heaven itself has an Allah. admiration. Allah. <laughs> Karbala the giver and heaven the peasant. Because mm. Karbala gave heaven Imam Hussein. Mm. So Karbala the given, heaven the peasant. Karbala the galaxy, heaven its moon and crescent. Karbala gives heaven its aroma, its essence. Without Karbala, heaven is evanescence. Evanescence, evanescence means it could evaporate, it would just disappear. With Karbala, heaven wants an association. With Karbala, heaven wants an association. With Karbala, heaven wishes a had bifurcation, which is a joining of two branches. <laughs> Karbala gave to heaven its coronation. 
Not the Quran, Karbala is heaven's recitation. <laughs> <laughs> Karbala is where one finds heaven's registration. If you don't go to Karbala, if you don't have it in your heart, you can't go to heaven. <laughs> Karbala is where one finds heaven's registration. Karbala, not a choice, but heaven's obligation. Mm. Mm. Karbala, the reality, heaven, the innovation. <laughs> Karbala, because we go to Karbala, we see Karbala. To me, heaven is an innovation. <laughs> Karbala is reality. Karbala, the reality, heaven is innovation. To Karbala, heaven itself eternally in prostration. Oh. Mm. Karbala is not heaven. It's the element that gives heaven its essence. Mm. Do not call Karbala heaven. Heaven is matter. Karbala is quintessence. Quintessence is the sixth element, which mm. everything heavenly is made out of. Allah. 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 You know what? I love, I love these kind of poems that has like a little punch to it, <laughs> you know, um, because in, in Arabic as well, I, th I don't know if they're called metaphors or not, but yeah, you know, in Arabic we have something like that as well. So there's a, there's a very short one, I'll, I'll translate as I'm going. So it goes, Alimu bas bin najaf and Ali had to cabat a lunch of Ali. Not only in Najaf, he has a mazar. Ali, even in the Kaaba, we can see him. Will my head you toof? We boosted Jida. Ali had to tell my head they toof. Ali, the one who loves him, will go around the Kaaba and he'll kiss. The walls Thanks. of the Kaaba. Oh. Ali, even the one who doesn't like him, will go around the Kaaba oh, and kiss thanks. the Kaaba. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. So these kind of poems. They're beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. It just is, you know, this is the power of poetry. Sense. And this is why our Imma, they love poetry so much because it delivers a message, it's in, a message in its own very unique way. It's a tool, it captures the mind. And with that, my dearest viewers, we head towards a break. You can start Googling to get your tickets towards Karbala, inshallah, and to Najaf. But we'll see you in a few minutes to continue our celebration. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Our dearest viewers, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We are continuing our festivities in this epic month of Sha'ban where we celebrate the birth anniversaries of three legends in our life none other than Imam al Hussein, Imam al Sajjad, and Abu Fadl alayhim wa afdal al salati wa salam. And to welcome you back, inshallah, your hearts are still quite warm from what we were previously going through. I just want to give you a hadith from Kamil al-Ziyara about the Qabr of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And this comes from our holy sixth Imam, Imam al-Sadi alayhi salam, the grandson of Imam Hussein, where he says, Allah has dedicated 4,000 angels to the grave of Hussein alayhi salam. 4,000 who were disheveled and covered with dust who cry over him and will continue to do so until the day of judgment. And he goes on, Imam alayhi salam. He says, these angels will accompany those who go to the ziyarah of Hussein alayhi salam while knowing his rights until they arrive at the safe haven. And if they become ill, the angels will visit them every morning and every evening. And when they die, and when they die, this is the promise of Ahl Bayt If you go and visit them, they're with you till forever. And when they die, the visitor of the visitor of Abu Abdullah. And when they die, the angels will attend their funerals and seek forgiveness for them until the day of judgment. Such is the status and the maqam of Abu Abdullah, Abu Abdullah Hussein, and such is his nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know if it's, if it's in the hadith, so the, the head angel's name is Mansur. Mm. The, the head angel who is the, in charge of all the angels in the shrine, in the dome, they reside in the dome of Imam Hussain al-Islam, his name is Mansur. Mansur. So when you go there, um, not a lot of people know this, but you should say, Mansur, witness that I am one who has come to visit Inshallah. the master of all martyrs. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Moving on with... Um, what you're talking about, the grave of Imam Hussain uh, In Punjabi, there's a term 
called, um, for example, uh, Hadar Jane Abu Shahbaz Jane, as in leave it leave it between them. Um, Abu Shahbaz knows and uh, Hadar knows. For mm. example, Sayyid Hadar knows. For example, so there's a there's a Punjabi Qasida that's recited universally and uh, with so much pride and oomph in Pakistan. Um, in Punjabi, and I'd like to recite that to please, you, please. Brothers, and inshallah, I'll explain the words as we go along, so that the viewers who are who are viewing in can uh, can benefit. Inshallah. Well, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. It's the same way I mentioned that. This the words are Rabb Jani Te Hussain Jani. So how does and it and it goes through different stories and different narrations where it was the, the miracles. Yeah, miracles. Yeah, and history said, you know what? Leave this between Allah and Imam Hussein. <laughs> so it's like it's poetic license, you know. It's allowed. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be so uh, so hardcore. Ah, Rab jaane te Hussein jaane, Rab jaane te Hussein jaane, Rab jaane te Hussein jaane, Rab jaane te Hussein jaane. Dek tu. اے دا واسطہ منگ لے دعا رب جانے تے حسین جانے رب جانے تے حسین جانے It says, دے کے تو اے دا واسطہ Give his واسطہ دے کے تو اے دا واسطہ منگ لے دعا Give his واسطہ Make your دعا After that, Hussein knows and Allah knows Allah Yeah? And this refers to the time where Imam, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was in sajda and Imam Hussain alayhi wa came on his back. Sent. Ke itni namaz par ho na bechayne Jitni padhave aj te ku Hussain اتنی نماز پر ہونا بے چینے جتنی پڑھاوے اجے تہکو حسینے مصطفیٰ سجدہ ودا کہندہ خدا رب جانتے حسین جانے سوئی سیز اتنی نماز پر ہونا بے چینے So it's referring to when the Prophet is in sajda and Imam Hussain is on his back and he goes اتنی نماز پر ہونا بے چینے Recite the namaz, recite as many namazes Right? Don't be restless اتنی نماز پر ہونا بے چینے جتنی پر ہاوے آج تیکو حسینے Go in sajda, pray as much namaz as you need to Don't be restless, just pray as many Hussain gets you to pray today جتنی پر ہاوے آج تیکو حسینے مصطفیٰ Sajda wada, kenda khuda. He says, Mustafa, uh, prolong your sajda. <laughs> Mustafa, prolong your sajda. Allah says, Rabbi Janite Hussain. Ahsan. Allah knows and Hussain knows. Ahsan. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad. Last verse, inshallah. Please. <coughs> so, in, um, in Pakistan, um, our tradition is narrated quite a lot. To be honest, I don't know the authenticity of it that much because um, I'm not, it's not my field. But um, <coughs> mine comes to Imam Hussain. Al-Islam. And he says, Imam, Allah has not blessed me with any children, <coughs> right? And I have a massive wish to have a son, right? So he it's, says, a, it's a valid narration. Is it? Okay, cool. So <laughs> Authenticated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I'll, I'll narrate that to you as well. Final verse and I'll please, give you a Please, please, please. <laughs> Kiti Hussain Medi Joli Abad Kiti Hussain Medi Joli Abad Sat Putar Dekhe Gaya Rahib Tujha Rab Janate Hussain Jani So this was a Rahib as in a traveller comes to Imam Hussain in Islam and he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't given me any, any children, he hasn't given me any sons. He says, Mere naseeba wa jalikhi na yun adhe. In my fortune, it's not written for me to have children. Right? But, Kiti Hussain me di joli abade. But Hussain, uh, the joli means the cradle. Yeah. Right? He goes, he, he um, 
how can I say? He rejuvenated my the cradle of my house, <coughs> right? Sat putar deke gaya. So he asked for one child. Imam Hussein al Islam granted him seven children. Allah. Wow. He said, Sat putar deke gaya. He goes, He gave me seven sons and he said, Go. Rabbi Jan it. He made a dua. This was a Christian. Yeah. And he made a, it's, it's in our narrations. And he made a dua. Mm. Imam, he, he came to Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein al Islam made a dua for him. Mm. Some traditions state it's the same Christian priest who looked after his head in a leper. You know what? Um, in, in sort of, um, in addition to that, <coughs> do you know, I think a lot of people sometimes try and use any any option or any avenue they can to downgrade the status of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Where they'll say, yeah, for and this is within our own within our own faith, where they'll say, yeah, Imam, you can't say Imam Hussein alayhi salam gave it to him because it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave it. There's no doubting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it. But he gave it through Imam Hussein. Of course, of course. If it wasn't for Imam Hussein Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have given it. I'm going to quickly sense. tell you a lovely tradition that will try and explain this to people. And it's about Prof Prophet Moses and I'll be very quick. Um, Prophet Moses, as we know, used to walk up and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he was going one time, a guy turned around and said to him, ask your, ask your God, you know, um, for uh, a very stupid question. Mm. Um, so Moses uh, was going up the mountain. Then a lady said to him, I can't have children. Can you ask your God to bestow me children? So this guy was like an infidel. And Moses was the prophet of God. So Moses is going and coming and he's saying to God, give this woman a child, give this woman a child. And God doesn't give her a child. This woman asked that guy, can you ask God to give me a child? So Moses has gone up the mountain and he said to Moses, listen, Moses, if you wanted to have a child, bring me human flesh. Mm. Moses is baffled, so he's going everywhere. So he's asking everyone, give me human flesh. Nobody's giving it to him. So he sees that same guy and he says, he says, Moses, why are you upset? He goes, because God has asked me for human flesh and no one's giving me human flesh. He said, give me the knife, cuts his flesh off, puts it in a Just plate. Like Moses goes up to the mountain. He gives God the human flesh. A little while later, the woman has a child. He's, Moses says, oh, maybe it's my prayer. She goes, no, you prayed for a long time, but I asked this guy. <laughs> so Moses has gone in a strong. He said, God, I'm your prophet. This guy he asked me, he, he's, he doesn't even believe in you properly. He goes, Moses, I asked you for flesh. Did you think of giving me your own? <laughs> this man gave me his. So imagine the status of Imam Hussein alayhi in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gave everything. Allah. Of course. And going on from that, there's a poem I have because it's not only Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Mm. Many of us go to the door of Abu Fadl. Al and um, this is a poem which involves some of my real life experience. SubhanAllah. Yes. Um, the poem is strong, but poetic license as well. And the poem is called Kaf Noon. Mm. I love this one. <coughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, Zainab's God and Ali's Pride. Mm -hmm. Oh, Zainab's God and Ali's ya Pride. Father. They call you not an Imam, but Bab al Hawaij. Mm. SubhanAllah. They call you not an Imam, but Bab al Hawaij. I ask how every wish do you fulfill? Because nobody comes back empty handed. You go with a clean heart to Abu Fadl. Yes? You won't come back empty handed. I ask how every wish do you fulfill? Do you have the power of be and it will? <laughs> do you have the power of be and it will? Because I had got something which I shouldn't have got. I come to Karbala and I stand at your shrine. I close my eyes looking for a sign. I see a vision, the name of us, and it spreads its wings. I swear I am blinded, brighter than Shib Jibrails they shine. Mm. And then I see the wishes waiting to be, be fulfilled, standing line after line. Wish after wish after wish, standing line after line. And then as these wings spread around me, a wind like a monsoon, because I felt something. I realized as I looked, not only is this a bust, this is the Hashemite moon. Mm. Oh, this is the Hashemite moon. I know how, how he fulfills every wish. I know how he fulfills every wish because as he opens his wing, on one I see calf on the other noon. Mm. On the one I see calf on the other noon. To some, the revelation is cool, 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 ending with nas. <laughs> to some, the revelation is cool, 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 ending with nas. To me, it's Ali Fatima, Hasnain, and Abbas. Allah, 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 got such a status it's because of his servitude to a man who had an even greater status and you know when we try when we when we try and give like you know very simple simple ahadith 
to youngsters and still even to, to, to us as, as, as adults, I was about to say elders, I don't think we're there yet. You know, us as adults, there are some that really kind of touch the heart in a very delicate way. And I just want to share one with you, inshallah, which comes uh, regarding Imam Hussain alayhi salam, where, and it's a very famous narration where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was carrying Imam Hussain alayhi salam on his shoulders. So similar to when uh, the Prophet was praying and Imam Hussain was on his back, that, what, that was a, you know, a regular type thing. They had that such grandson, grandfather type playfulness between them. And it's, we forget that Imam Hussain had more to him than just Karla. And here he is in his, in his childhood. So the Prophet's carrying Imam Hussain on his shoulders as his you know, grandchild in that love. And this man says to him, what a good ride you've mounted on, son. Talking to Imam Hussain, what a good ride you've got, huh? You've got yourself the Prophet, what a good ride. To which the Prophet replies and says, and what a good rider he is, talking about Imam Hussain. And it's just that love and cheek between the two that, this is the Prophet, you know, this isn't some random, this is the Prophet playing with Imam Hussain in such a kind way, kissing him on his cheek, holding him on his shoulders. And it's no surprise then when you see a man who serves and gives all to defend. Of course, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you everything in return, and of course, you become Babul Hawaj. So, this, in addition so to what, what you said, as please. Well, um, do you know a lot of times um, I tell people when we're talking within ourselves, especially within our families and with the Mu'mineen, sometimes we're very, very hostile and harsh towards somebody else. But if you actually look at the way that Ahlul Bayt used to talk no to each other, mm. Right, if you look, if you, if some, someday if you get the chance to read the translation of Hadith al mm. and how the Prophet وسلم, talks to his, and when he, refer, when he refers to Imam Hassan al Islam, he says, Oh, the nur of my eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And when they refer to him, say, Eh, Allah ke nabi. Mm. Oh, the, oh, the Nabi of Allah. You know, that love, we, that, respect and love. Respect that love and it was and both respect ways. That they had <coughs> for, for each other, for, for their fellow Mu'minin, for the fellow followers of Ahlul Bayt. Are we sometimes guilty of going against that in our own actions? Mm. All comes down to love. Um, and this is a quick poem about love Please. and the love of Imam Hussein. Please. What is love, they ask? Love itself, we all say love is an emotion, yes? Love itself loves who installed love in my heart. Imam Hussein installed love in my mm. heart. Love itself loves he who installed love in my heart. It is Hussein who has gained the heart of love itself. It is Hussein who has gained the heart of love itself. His love is an intoxication of pain, yet it pleasures my soul. Mm. It's an intoxication of pain, yet it, yet it pleasures my soul. This love is an unknown treasure worth more than all the diamonds and all the gold. Mm. His love is not my right nor my due, for I may be a sinner. We're all sinners. Mm. I may be a sinner, but my love for sure is true. I love he who is the gravity of love. The more I get closer, the more I cannot get enough. I'm sure everybody will say, every time you go to Karbala, when you come back, you wish you never came back. Yeah. You want to go again and again and again, and the it's closer addictive. and the older you get. Yeah. So the more I get closer, the more I can't get enough. And then I say, oh, what an intoxication. People have alcohol as intoxication. That's not an intoxication. Yeah. That's minor. This is heavenly intoxication. Or oh, what an intoxication. <laughs> Keep filling my heart with his name, for he is the elixir of love. Well, this month, subhanAllah, we have one month where there are so many blessings, mm. you know. Ali um, Akbar as well. Ali Akbar, exactly. So, um, there is a nice poem, again, by, uh, by Nuri. Um, and this one, I recited a few years ago in Karbala. Also on, on, on the Imam Hussain TV. Mm. So it always, every time I look at it, it always brings back memories. Because I've been Sha'ban in Iraq and the, the, the atmosphere is amazing. Like you see in Arba'in when you go, mm. the atmosphere is sad, everyone's there. And you know, you can, you literally, you're so tired, but you take energy from, yeah. from everyone around you, right? Now Sha'ban is exactly the same thing. It's but packed, it's different. but it's different. It's more of a happy joyous, mood. Yeah. Exactly, a joyous mood. And the, the energy that you get from everyone, I mean, look, subhanAllah, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. So this is, this is a small uh, poem. Please, please. Mm. This is Karbala's month, Hussein born on the third, born on the fourth, the moon. 
This month, Karbala glows in all of its heroes. Abu Sajjad's Sajjad Hussein and his brother, two sons and a moon this month like no other. Welcomes Shaban Karbala lit up in pride and honor. For its loved ones, she leaves an all. Each lover, each man wants to be with her. And she listens, she decorates her wonders. On her beauty, men ponder. Her sand sweetens, she perfumes each visitor. Leaving the heart. So tender for three lions. And it's actually very true now. When you go to Kerbala, no matter, you know, all of us are nowhere near the feet of the infallibles. Mm. And their akhlaq and their patience. I mean, look, Sayyidah Zainab has the mind of fallibility. And why was she blessed with this? It's because of her patience and what she offered to Islam. She, she practically saved Islam. And and this is what this was a, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Sayyidah Zainab has that pride inside her. And yet again, unfortunately, there is not one lecture, I don't think I've heard only one maybe one, one or two, three lectures that I've heard, given the biography biography of Sayyidah Zainab and who she is. Mm. Now, people a lot of people actually don't understand that Sayyidah Zainab was uh, what Zainab means Zinat Abiha. Ahsent. She's the decorations of uh, of her father, of her father. She is the mirror reflection of her, of her father. Now, what now? When she was born, Imam Ali came. She, he said to Fatima, Zah, "Have you named her? Because you know they have this. Nowadays they fight. No, I want a name. You want a name? <laughs> no." He comes to Fatima, Zah, "Have you named her?" He says, "She says, how can I name her? And her father hasn't named her. And what does that mean, woman? He says, he goes, how can I name her? <laughs> if Rasulullah hasn't named her, let's go to Rasulullah. They go to Rasulullah and so mm -hmm. we ask Rasulullah, we have what are you going to name her? He said, how can I name her if we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? <laughs> and Jibra'il came down and said, name her Zainab. Mm. This, this lady didn't only live in Karbala. Mm. Her beauty, her, 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 yeah. her, her, her the, the, the knowledge she passed down wasn't in Karbala. She had the knowledge of an Imam. Mm. Now Imam, Imam, Imam Hassan Askari says that if uh, you are not close, if the Imam of your time isn't available, um, if, if he's away or something like that, then go to his ladies, go to his wife, go to his sister. Because they are as knowledgeable. Say the Zainab Amir al Mu'mineen in Kufa or in Medina, when uh, Amir al Mu'mineen used to give lessons in the mosque, Say the Zainab used to give lessons inside the house. Mm -hmm. And seven days a week, one day was the Quran, how to recite it, second day. Third day is uh, Aqaid, the fourth day is, is Fiqh, the fifth day. Yani, uh, it's, it's crazy, this is says Zainab, and no one actually, you know, there's, there's not a person who's actually come out and given a whole one hour, hour and a half lecture, because... There is, you haven't heard it. <laughs> no, 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 there, there is a few, no, I've there heard a few, few, but there there's is a not few. enough. There's but it's not, not enough, enough. of course not, no way is enough. I mean, I mean, Zayda Zainab played a massive, massive role in our religion. Uh, I'm not saying there is no lectures, but there is, but you, there's, you know, it, it should be there in your face, yeah. everyone should know I this. I think if we look at Sayyidah Zainab, her sacrifices, her mother, her father, her brothers, her children, Umar, and what she saw in Sham. Um, I think if you looked at one person, that she was a lady, but we wouldn't we would say, but the character, mm -hmm. the strength of the strongest man that ever lived. Zainab, simple as that. Zainab, that's it. And inshallah, my dearest viewers, we leave you with this one hadith, inshallah, t going towards Imam al Sajjad alayhi wasalam, coming from the Prophet. When Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, On the day of judgment, a caller will call. Where is the adornment of the worshippers? Where is Sayyid al-Sajideen? Where is Zayn al-Abideen? And it is as if I am looking at my son 
Ali ibn al-Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib emerging from between the rows. The words of Nabi Allah Muhammad, of our dear beloved Imam whose birthday we celebrate oh, amongst Allah. his father and his uncle. I thank our dear guests on behalf of all of our dear viewers and may thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah accept what little we have offered towards Ahem. His Immaculate Servants, and may Allah grant us the intercession of them for dunya wa akhirah. May Allah enlighten the graves of our marhumin with their nur and scent into their graves, insha'Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of the one who will avenge the blood of al Hussein and Karbala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.